We also want to thank our other sponsor, Dragon Shield. Dragon Shield has some of the best sleeves and Magic the Gathering accessories on the market at a very affordable price. Hey guys, welcome to Budget EDA. I'm your host, Mike, and on this week's episode, we bring you Lonus, Cryptozoologist, out of Modern Horizons 2 at a $100 budget. Lonus is a green and a blue for a legendary creature, Snake Elf Scout. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, investigate. You can tap it, sacrifice X clues, target opponent reveals the top X cards of their library. You may put a non land permanent card with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield under your control. That player puts the rest on the bottom of their library in a random order. With Lonus, we're going to lean heavily into the investigate mechanic because we want to make as much clues as we can. So we're able to use Lonus's ability. So we're able to steal cards off the top of our opponent's library. It's a really powerful ability. And the easiest way of investigating is with Lonus's ability on her, where whenever you play a creature, you're going to be able to investigate and create a clue token. We do have some ways of making clue tokens in addition to that in the deck. So there's a lot of cards from Shadows Over Innistrad that have the investigate investigate mechanic on it. So we included the good ones in this deck. And then there's other ways to double up your tokens and get some additional value as well. There is a lot of synergy with tokens. So this is a token creation deck because of the investigate mechanic, but we do have other things in here that make tokens as well. So we're going to lean heavily into that strategy as well with this deck. Now we do have quite a few blink effects because Lonus says whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you get to investigate. So if you're able to blink your creatures, you can investigate with Lonus as well. It's not on cast. It is whenever they enter the battlefield. So we do have quite a few creatures that have enter the battlefield abilities in here. We do have a lot of creatures in here that have powerful enter the battlefield abilities that we're going to be able to rebuy with those blink effects as well. And then we do have some ways of doubling up those ETB abilities with the blink effects and other things in here that will double up the blink effects and also double up how many times we're able to use Lonus's ability when we activate it as well. And then the name of the game with this deck is we do want to be able to steal our opponent's stuff. So this deck is going to be as powerful as your opponent's decks are going to be. So if your opponents have a powerful deck and they have a ton of stuff on the top of their library, then you're going to be able to steal that stuff. But if they don't have a super powerful deck, then this is going to fit right in with whatever deck that you're playing against your opponent. Next up, we're going to go over the stats in this deck. So this deck has 11 ramp spells and we do like to keep around 10 in our deck. So this is a little bit over on the ramp side. We have eight ways of drawing cards in here. Now there is an asterisk. I didn't include the investigate mechanic as card draw. If you did include investigate in there, we would have way more than eight card draw spells. And you'll be able to draw a ton of cards because you'll have all these clue tokens lying around that you can use to either draw cards or use for Lonus's ability. So there is a lot more ways of drawing cards than just the eight as well. We have 13 pieces of interaction. We've got 17 ways of making tokens. Now, most of those are going to be making clue tokens by investigating. But we do have some other powerful ways of making tokens as well. We've got ways of making treasures and food as well and you can use those whenever you need them we've got eight ways of blinking our creatures and rebuying those etb effects and then we've also got 36 lands in here. The asterisk is because there is a modal double-faced card in that number. So there's 35 regular lands and then one modal double-faced card that I've pretty much been putting in every single green deck because it's that good. And we'll go over that later in the video as well. Let's get into the deck deck. First up, let's go over some of the ways that we're able to draw cards in this deck. And we're going to go over the most powerful versions of that in here. We're not going to go over all the investigate cards yet, but we will go over them in the token producing section. So first up, we've got Beast Whisper. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card, which is really nice because we've got over 30 creatures in this deck, most of which that have entered the battlefield abilities. We've also got Solve the Harvest in here. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under control, you can draw a card as well. So these give you a similar ability. One on cast, one's on enter the battlefield. The nice thing about Soul to Harvest is because we have ways of blinking our creatures, that will also trigger Soul of the Harvest as well, and it will not trigger Beast Whisper. So that's one thing to note if you are to ghostly flicker one of your creatures. You will be able to draw a card off Soul of the Harvest, but not off of Beast Whisper. Next up, we have a card that I've been finding myself putting in quite a few decks. Maybe I've been making a lot of token decks lately, but it's Idol of Oblivion. It's a card out of Commander 21. 
It is an artifact that you can tap to draw a card. Activate it only if you've created a token this turn. And then it's got a less useful ability of paying eight and tap it to sacrifice Idle Oblivion to create a 10-10 colorless Eldrazi creature token. It's a really nice card if you are making a bunch of tokens, which in this deck we are. We'll probably be making a token most turns. So you'll be able to tap this to draw a card most turns for only two mana. It's really nice. And you can also cash this in later for eight mana to put a big, dumb 10-10 Eldrazi token on the battlefield, which can be nice if you have ways of doubling those tokens up and stuff as well. Next up, we've got Shimmer Dragon. It's a creature that has tap two untapped artifacts you control to draw a card. Now in a deck that's putting a ton of artifact tokens on the battlefield, this is a really nice way of being able to use those tokens for an advantage and not just for Lonus's ability or to pay three and tap to draw a card. You can just tap those artifacts to draw a card, which is really nice. This is one of the more powerful cards in the deck. It's a little bit more on the expensive side because it hasn't been reprinted since that Throne of Eldraine Brawl deck, which has been a while now, but very powerful card if you have a lot of ways of putting a ton of artifacts on the battlefield. It's a really good creature to put in your decks. Next up, let's talk about all the ways that we're able to produce clue tokens in this deck. In addition to all the creatures that we have in here with Lonus on the battlefield, we did want to have ways of being able to investigate as well. Just in case Lonus isn't on the battlefield yet or gets killed multiple times, you can still get those clues on the battlefield. Then when you get Lonus out, you're able to spin the wheel with her. So first up, we've got two out of Modern Horizons. First one is Floodhound, or as some people have called it, Blue's Clues. It's a dog that you can pay three and tap it to investigate to put a clue on the battlefield. And then we've got got hard evidence. It's a sorcery that creates a 0-3 blue crab creature token, but also has investigate on it as well. It's only a one mana spell, so I thought it was worth including in here. Then we've got Erdwall Illuminator. This is a really nice one. This is a Panharmonicon for clue tokens. So whenever you investigate for the first time each turn, you can investigate an additional time as well. Then we've got Ongoing Investigation. It's a two mana enchantment. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, investigate. And you can exile a creature card from your graveyard to investigate and gain two life as well. Rude out is a way of destroying target artifact or enchantment and also has investigate on it too. Just a nice removal spell. Also gives you a clue token as well. Then we've got Fleeting Memories. When it enters the battlefield, you can investigate. And whenever you sacrifice a clue, target player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So you can actually mill your opponents out with this card as well. Just be careful that you're not playing against a graveyard deck and just basically giving them exactly what they want with this. So don't do this against a graveyard-based strategy. Then we've got Trail of Evidence. This one's an enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you can investigate. So we do have quite a few instant or sorcery spells in here. So it's going to generate you a ton of clue tokens over the course of the game. Magnifying Glass. This is a three mana mana rock, but also has pay four and tap it to investigate. Uvenwald Mysteries is an enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, you can investigate. And whenever you sack a clue, this also gives you a one, one white human soldier creature token as well. Then we've got Tireless Provisioner. This is a new one out of Modern Horizons that I like a lot. It has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, you can create a food token or a treasure token. So this will help you ramp, but you can also gain you some light too. And then we've got his older brother. We've got Tireless Tracker. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, you can investigate whenever you sack a clue, put a plus one, plus one counter on Tireless Tracker. This one is quite expensive, but it's definitely worth including in the deck for the $12 cost. It's gonna make you a ton of clue tokens, which is exactly what we wanna do in this deck. Next up, we've got Confirm Suspicions. It's a counter spell for five mana, which is a lot, but it does also give you three clue tokens when you use this. It is a little expensive, but getting those three clues off of it is nice as well. And then last but not least, we've got a five mana artifact. It's Tamio's Journal. At the beginning of your upkeep, you can investigate. And then the really nice thing on here, you can tap it and sacrifice three clues to search your library for a card and put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. So it's basically a demonic tutor if you sacrifice three clues. So really nice card. You can use this to find your Panharmonicon or Academy Manufacturer, other things in here, which is really nice. Next up, let's go over all the creatures that have enter the battlefield abilities on them that we're going to be able to take a lot of advantage of with this deck. So first up, we've got Coiling Oracle. When it enters the battlefield, you can reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, you get to put that card into your hand. Wall of Blossoms, when it enters the battlefield, you get to draw a card. And then Farhaven Elf, when it enters, you get to search your library for a basic land, put it onto the battlefield, tapped, and then shuffle your library. We've also got Wood Elves in here, which is the same as Farhaven Elf, except it searches specifically for a forest card. So if you had something like Breeding Pool in this deck, you could search that up. We don't because it's a budget version, but if you put it in here, you could 
could do that. Then we've got a couple of ways of destroying artifacts and enchantments. We've got Rex Sage, which destroys both. And then we've got Mangle Horn that destroys just an artifact, but also comes with the added ability of artifacts have to enter the battlefield tap for your opponents, which is nice as well. Then we've got Eternal Witness. It enters the battlefield. You can return a card from your graveyard to your hand. Solemn enters the battlefield. You get to put, search your library for a basic land, put another battlefield tap, then shuffle. Also lets you draw a card when it dies. Amphim Mutineer is one of my favorite creatures out of Commander Legends. Enters the battlefield. You can exile up to one target non-Salamander creature, and its controller creates a 4-3 Salamander Warrior creature token. Also has Encore for 4 blue blue. You can exile it and put a token onto the battlefield for each opponent, which is really crazy as well well. Then we've got Mole Drifter. It enters the battlefield. You can draw two cards. Has that evocability on there for two and a blue, which is quite a bit less than its five converted mana cost. We also have Wave Sifter, which is the Modern Horizons version of Mole Drifter, which enters the battlefield and investigates twice. Also has Invoke as well. And then Thought Monitor is a Mole Drifter with Affinity. Enters the battlefield. You can draw two cards as well. Has Affinity for Artifacts, which is nice in this deck because we're going to have so many clues. You can likely pay this for just a blue mana and get this on the battle field. Last but not least, we've got Peregrine Drake. It enters the battlefield. You get to untap up to five lands, which basically pays for itself. But if you have ways to blink this for less, you could potentially go infinite. We don't have the infinite mana combo in this deck. You would need something like Deadeye Navigator to pull that off, which is a little bit outside of our budget. But if you did have that card, I would definitely include in this deck. Next up, let's go over all the ways that we're able to blink our ETB creatures and get some additional value off of them. Also, double up on those those triggers off of Lonus as well. So first up, we've got Essence Flux. You can exile a creature control, then return to the battlefield under your control. If it's a spirit, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. We don't care about that part. Then we've got Displace. You can exile up to two target creatures you control, then return them to the battlefield. Ghostly Flicker is the same thing, except you can also do it with artifacts and lands as well, which doesn't get used as often as the creature side of it, but it does have that ability as well. And we've also got Illusionist Stratagem, which is the same thing, except it costs an extra mana. But for that extra mana, you do also get to draw a card off of it, so replace itself as well. Team or Sabertooth, while it doesn't blink, it lets you return those creatures to your hand so you can replay them later, which is just as good as blinking them in most cases. The nice thing about it too is if you do it, it will give Team or Sabertooth indestructible as well so you can protect itself. Conjurer's Closet is a repeatable blink. It's a five mana artifact. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile target creature control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. This is a really nice one in the deck as well. And then last but not least, we've got the creatures in here that can return themselves back to their hands. You can abuse these creatures. You can keep playing them with Lonus on the battlefield to get as many clues as you have mana for, which is nice. I like to include them in the deck to have repeatable ways of making those clue tokens if we run out of gas or something like that down the road. We've got Shrieking Drake and Dream Stalker. When they enter the battlefield, return a permanent you control or a creature you control to owner's hands. So you can use this to return itself back to your hand and then keep replaying it to get as many investigate triggers as you'd like off of of Lonus as long as Lonus is on the battlefield, which is really nice. You can also use this with something like Beast Whisper on the battlefield to draw as many cards as you have mana as well. So you could play Sh Shrieking Drake five times, draw five cards, investigate five times. Uh, it can get pretty crazy pretty quick. Next up, let's talk about a couple of cards that we have in this deck that give us some utility. They don't really fit into the other spots in this deck. And first up, we're going to talk about a couple of cards that are able to help us with our token making strategy. The first one is a new one out of Modern Horizons, one that I like quite a bit. It's Academy Manufacturer. It's an artifact creature. If you would create a clue, food, or treasure token, instead create one of each. So every time you're able to investigate with Lonus on the battlefield, it's going to come with a food and treasure token as well, as long as this is on the battlefield. That's a ton of value off of that investigate mechanic, which is just playing a creature. And we do have other ways in this deck to make treasure tokens as well. So you can use those to also investigate and make clues too. So very powerful synergy here with this deck. Going to give you a ton of value over the course of the game in the way of making a ton of tokens. Next up, we've got Second Harvest. It's an instant. For each token you control, create a token that's a copy of that permanent. So if you have 10 clue tokens on the battlefield, you can use this to make 10 more, which can give you another spin with Lonus's ability if you need it. And just a very powerful card. Only costs four mana to play this spell and get a ton of value off of it. Next up, we've got one of my personal favorite cards of all time. It's Panharmonicon. It's an artifact. It is the perfect card to put into an enter the 
battlefield type deck. And it's a artifact that says if an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent, you control the trigger. It triggers an additional time. Now, one thing to note here is this will trigger Lonus two times. If this is on the battlefield with Lonus and you play a creature, you will get to investigate twice, which is really powerful. It will also work with all of your enter the battlefield abilities. Something like Mold Drifter will trigger twice. So you get to draw four cards off of it. This sits on the battlefield in this deck. You're going to accrue a ton of value. It's a very powerful card. Totally worth the $8 price tag that this has. If you don't have one, definitely pick one up. Next up, we've got a way to double our Lonus trigger. So when Lonus spins the wheel to see what's on top of your opponent's library when you stack all those clues, we've got a way of doubling that up. So we're able to do that two times. So we've got Rings of Bright Hearth. Whenever you activate an ability, if it isn't a mana ability, you may pay two. If you do copy that ability, you may choose new targets for the copy. So you can use this to sack 10 clues and choose two opponents to use that ability on to look at the top 10 cards or library and find something 10 or less to put onto the battlefield. Very powerful card. And it was just reprinted in Commander Legends. So the price on this has gone from, I believe it was around 30 bucks to now it's only about five six dollars definitely pick these up if you don't have them they will go up in price here in the future next up we've got another one that i really like and it's one that i try to put in a lot of decks but seemingly doesn't make the cut sometimes but in this one it just was a no-brainer it's inspiring statuary it's a three mana artifact non-artifact spells you cast have improvised so you can tap your artifacts to help cast your spells each artifact you tap after you're done Activating mana abilities pays for one colorless mana. This is like Convoke for artifacts, but you can use this on your non-artifact spells with this on the battlefield. So it's a nice little ramp card. You can use those clue tokens that are just sitting there on the battlefield to help cast your spells, which is really nice. And last but not least, we have Panharmonicon number two in here. It's War of Invention. Basically just a way to find our Panharmonicon, but you could also use this to find Academy Manufacturer if you already have Panharmonicon out or that Inspiring Statuary as well. But this is just a tutor that I really wanted to find Panharmonicon because I really want that card on the battlefield at all times. This is just a second way of finding it. Basically search your library for an artifact card, convert a mana cost X or less, puts it on the battlefield and then you shuffle your library. The nice thing about this is improvise as well. Well, so you can you can use your artifacts to help pay for the X cost on that spell. Next up, we're going to talk about a couple of ways that we're going to be able to put permanents that our opponents control back on top of their library. So we're able to use Lonus's ability on them to steal the permanents that we want. Now, we don't have a ton of ways of doing this, but we do have a couple of ways in here. So first up, we've got Expel from Orozca. It's an instant with Ascend. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. If you have the city's blessing, you may put that permanent on top of its owner's library instead. Ascend's going to be really easy to get in this deck with how many clues that we're able to make. You'll have ascend very quickly in this game. Next up, we've got Temporal Spring. It's a sorcery. Put target permanent on top of its owner's library. And then we've got Commit to Memory. Commit is put target spell or non-land permanent into its owner's library second from the top. And then memory has aftermath. Each player shuffles his or her hand and graveyard into his or her library and then draws seven cards. So that's a nice ability to have on this card as well. If you need to refill your hand. Thank you so much for watching our video today. If you like this video and you wanna see more budget commander content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can also check us out on patreon.com slash budget EDH. There's a bunch of different tiers and ways to interact with us outside of YouTube. We'll see you guys next time.